Welcome to episode 75 of Jumps to Champions, where today it is my first match of the Skybet Championship, my first ever season in the Championship. If you missed last season, you missed a good season because I got promoted to the Championship. Brilliant achievement for a team that is really only freshly promoted from the conference, really. Um, obviously, we spent many years trying to get out of the conference and promoted first time from League 2, and then it took two attempts to get up from League 1 into the Championship. How will we fare this year in the Championship? Will we completely be out of our depth and get relegated? Or can we somehow miraculously get promoted from the Championship at the first time of asking? With my tactic, there anything is possible, because I've obviously done really well over the last couple of years, only to lose two, uh, 10 league games over those two seasons. I keep reiterating that, but that is an achievement. It shows my tactic is pretty solid. But, uh, predictably so, we are predicted to finish bottom of the championship, 2000-1, to one, to win the title at the same rate as Exeter. Barnsley and Chesterfield just above us, 1,000 to 1. So Everton are the favourites. So they're obviously the big catchers in this division. We have to watch out for Everton, Norwich, Burnley, Villa, Nottingham Forest. Then after that, there's a bit of a gap. But Palace could be strong. We're, I mean, the Championship is very unpredictable, you have to remember. So anything can happen. We could have an incredible season, you never know. My two key players apparently this season will be George Cooper and Chris Robinson. That's a clue. I've already signed, re-signed Chris Robinson on the right wing on loan. But let's look at the team, look at my signings and pre-season results before getting on with this first match of the season against Wolverhampton or Wanderers. And I will also be playing my League Cup match against Gillingham. Can we finally get a victory in the League Cup? It's been a while. Have I ever won in the League Cup? I don't know. Anyway, as you can see here, the team's a reasonable size. There's lots of new names there, but you may notice Cameron Stewart's still here. I said in the last episode he would be gone out the team. But I decided to keep him for one more year, simply as a backup winger, in case I need a right or left winger. He asked for 3k a week, which is a lot for him. He was That's doubled his wage, but obviously he's playing in the Championship now. He's, he's obviously dropping off. He's 31. He didn't have a very good season last year with injuries but he is literally just going to be a backup for me and will only play when necessary okay let's look at the team and see what's happened Paul Mitchell still hasn't come back by the way I've, tr I've tried to loan him about I've, I think I've bid for him 15 times on loan and Reading have accepted but he is rejecting the opportunity to come, for, to come back to me for his be his fourth season with Trumpster City in the championship and a, a level higher than he was previously he's not getting game time of reading in the premier league he's uh in the under 21s and he's 23 now so he really needs to go somewhere and play i can't afford him because they want six million so i can't actually buy him outright anyway where am, where am i looking at the, the scouting here we go transfers so lots of players coming in but first of all going out of the team tom young's has eventually gone and i've let go quite a few youngsters which just they didn't develop Kulabali rejected my offer of, uh, I think I offered him a rotation contract. And he's rejected that and gone to Northampton on a free. And Louis Malt's gone out on loan to Walsall. That's the best I could do. I couldn't get him a, rid of him for even a free. It was pretty annoying when that happens. Okay, coming into the team, let's start with the highest sign-in. Duranovic, a Montenegrin, has come in for 80k. He looks like a good strike. Unfortunately, he's just got injured. He got injured three or four weeks ago. So it sort of hindered his pre-season, unfortunately. But he did manage to score three goals in one start and three sub-appearances for me in the early days of pre-season. So he could be a good player. He's not, he's not actually got any caps for Montenegro, strangely enough. I don't know if he's from a different country originally and he's ch chosen to play for Montenegro. No, he was born in, born in Montenegro. He's just not played for them for whatever reason. He's just not good enough for the national team. But he looks quite good, I think. Personally, I think he looks quite good and is my joint best striker along with Foto. I've already told you about him. I've re-signed him. He had a good pre-season as well. Well, relatively good. Two goals. I think he got both of those in the same game. So there's definitely room in for improvement. Next in is Michael O'Connor, 60k. He's one for the future, really. Will be a backup central mid midfielder alongside Hoey and Perkins. Uh, they, they're all at the same level. 
And he looks all right. He could develop into a decent midfielder. He's got four caps for the Ireland under-21s. And he's come from Coleraine, where he's uh, played plenty of games over the last few years. So we'll see how he does. He scored an incredible goal in the last game of pre-season, actually. I'm going to be starting him today because of injuries. Next up is this guy, Brian Machin. He's gone straight into the under-21s. Just a, a gamble on a player that may develop, may not, probably won't. But for 5k, I think it was, it doesn't really matter. I had, I think, half a, around about half a million to spend in the end, I guess, once taken into account all the... Um, actually, I've only spent 145k, and I think I've got 100 and about the same left. But obviously, because of contracts and stuff, I've adjusted the budget. Next up, Carl Bartley, a backup. He'll be a backup centre-back or right-back for me. You may remember Carl Bartley. He's been around quite a few clubs on the game and in real life actually been at Sheffield United and Bradford the last few years and I think he could be a solid addition to the team he, he is probably going to be back up to Hickford and Langiano um, also I've got plenty of new right backs and full backs into the team as well so he's a good addition to the team next up Scott Tanser a left back from Hull City he's going to be my main man at left back replacing Bob Harris this year Bob Harris will be back up to Tanser I think Tanser is a better player. He was playing in the championship the last couple or three years, in fact, with Rochdale and then Hull City. So he's got um, some experience at this level. He's 27, so he's only a younger option to Bob Harris. Similar ability, but slightly better, I would say. Next up, another fullback. Now, this player is interesting. He's called Kyle Walker Peters. I think he started at Tottenham as well, funnily enough, with the name Kyle Walker. And he's been playing in the championship the last three seasons with Bristol City and he's a really good player to have because he's versatile he's either footed and can play left or right back equally well so definitely a good player to have especially on the bench can apparently play up front as well but I'm not sure I'll be doing that with his two finishing sorry if there's a bit of background noise by the way there's like road works going on so hopefully it's not too noisy if, if they start drilling then I'll have to pause the video and restart it anyway next up lots of signings as you can see Jose Lucena one of my um, many Portuguese signings coming into the team, you'll notice. He is a really good defence midfielder. Will, meet, will be my replacement, basically, for Koulibaly. And will be my main defence midfielder. He's a, a solid player. Played for sporting. Uh, played in the first team and mainly the B team, I guess. Over the past few years. But he, he looks good. I like him. He's quite young. He's 22. He's got good mental, physical, decent technical as well. He's, he's a great player to have in defence midfield, I think. Maybe could improve his tackling. It's only 12. Next up, another um, Portuguese player. Jose Lorenzo, a right back. He's going to be my main right back. I, I don't know why I saw, my scouts um, were allowed to go to Europe. And I think they went to Portugal. And they suddenly just suggested some players. And I looked at them all and I thought, wow, these are actually really good players. So I've signed, I think, four Portuguese players in total. He's come from Porto, been playing in the B team there. Played a couple games in the first team quite a few years ago now. But he's 22, once again relatively young. He looks really good. He's pacey as well on the right um, wing back position. So, yeah, I like the look of him a lot. Next up, Paul Falk and I have actually signed on a permanent deal. Not on loan. <laughs> Finally, he's had three years of me on loan alongside Paul Mitchell. Uh, he's come from Southampton. On a free, his contract ran up and they didn't want to give him a new deal. And I thought his, he's been decent for me over the last three years. I've liked him. I think some of you guys have liked him. So I decided to give him a shot and I've signed him up. I, I don't know if he be first choice. Probably George Cooper will be first choice, choice on the left wing. Next up, James Langiano. Now I'm really surprised I managed to get him on a free. I, I'm, I'm surprised Everton didn't give him a new deal because he's got potential. He's 21. He was a great player for me last year in centre, central defence. He could play midfield as well. He's a versatile player. And I really like him. Uh, I am, I'm sort of surprised Everton haven't given, given him a new deal. So they are in the championship now, remember. So he could have been a backup for them, I think. But anyway, happy days for me. I've got a really good central defender in Langiano. Next up is the Portuguese keeper I've already told you about, Carvalho. Everything is dropping off for some reason at the moment. Maybe because I've got everything on heavy and he might not like that. So I'll change that to average, I think. He's done pretty well in pre-season. No mistakes. Been very solid. Made some good saves. He will be number one over Lovelock. He's not the best keeper in the world. I could maybe could have signed a better keeper, but I had a look around. I couldn't really find anyone. 
decided to sign this guy. He's got amazing potential apparently. He's 23, so there's still scope for him to, to for him to grow as a keeper. And he's solid in sort of goalkeeping attributes, mental and physical, I guess. So a good all round keep all round keeper. Photo I've already said he's back, the Cypriot. Hopefully he'll score some goals for me. Next up, the last Portuguese player I signed on loan. He's at 32 though. So it's strange to get a player of his, age, his, his, his age on loan. And he's going to be my attacking central playmaker, replacing Mitchell, who I will still strive to try and get before the end of the transfer window. I really hope he accepts me. I've given him, a, offered a one month loan deal, it's the latest thing. So I'm waiting to hear back from him. Um, and then maybe if he does come up, try and convince him to stay the rest of the season. We'll see. Anyway, I like the look of this guy. He's good um, from dead ball situations, good corners, decent free kicks, good penal uh, okay penalties, but passing's very good, vision's very good, and he should be brilliant in the central midfield. He's a good all-round player for me, and he's experienced as well. And lastly, I've once again signed Chris Robinson on loan. He was here for the last half of last season and did okay. Nothing spectacular, but I like the look of him. He's, he's got pace, he's good at dribbling, he's good at crossing, and... Yeah, I'm hoping he puts in a good performance. Anyway, pre-season, how did I get on? Beat my under-21s and under-18s, as you would expect. We beat Barnet 1-0. We beat Dagenham and Redbridge 4-1. Faux 2, those were the two goals he scored. And we were really unlucky to lose against a very strong Arsenal team consisting of Alexis Sanchez in that team, by the way. They got a, a late goal in that one. We got a decent draw against Livorno 1-1 thanks to a Faulkner goal in the last minute. And then we beat Montpellier, a very good win. Nick Riley with two goals and Lengiano with the other. 3-0, very happy with that before beating Whittam, our local affiliated team, 2-0. So, we've got Wolves and we've got Gillingham in the Capital One Cup. This is the team I'm going with. I'm going with Carvalho in defence, Lorenzo, Hickford, Lengiano, Tensa, Lucena, Pimenta, four Portuguese players in the team. O'Connor is the young Irish lad in central midfield simply because of few injuries. Andrew Hunt is out of this game because of an injury in the last game. He will be my main man alongside Pacenta in central midfield, I think. Uh, Juranovic could be my number one striker, or it could be Foto. Not sure at the moment. If another guy comes along that is just stand out above everyone else, either on loan or a free signing, then I will sign him because I still think I need a really top class striker. I think Foto and Juranovic are good enough for sort of bottom of the championship sides. We, If we want to compete, we need a real top guy up front because their tactic's so solid. It's just a fact of finding someone to put in the back of the net, I think. Got with Riley on the wing as well, who's actually not got injured in pre-season, which is a miracle. He's going to get injured in this game now, isn't he? And Cooper on the left wing. OK, let's get on with this game. Right, this is it. First game in the Skybet Championship. I'm excited, I am, but also slightly nervous because we get, could get completely thumped uh, in our first ever game in this league. We could be out of our depth completely, uh, but hopefully not. Let's hope we can carry on the good form of last year. We've only lost 10 league games in two years, so <laughs> that is brilliant, really. I can't remember how many we lost in League 2, but... I suppose I haven't really lost that many games in the last four years because we've got promotion from the conference, promotion from League Two, and then it took two years of two very good years to get promoted from League One. So the last four seasons have been fantastic after five struggling years in the conference. Uh, was it promoted on the fourth or fifth attempt? I've actually forgotten. First year was Conference South. We got promoted. Second, third, fourth... Fifth, we were promoted from the conference. Sixth from League Two. Yeah, so it was four, our fourth year in the conference. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Underdogs, but let's give something to cheer. I hope that works. Come on, guys. Gone with um, an advanced forward rather than a deep line forward because Fotu and Juranovic both play better as advanced forwards. But I might go back to my old deep line forward because it is and has been effective although last year we didn't get many goals from the striking position bacon top score of 13 despite not really playing as my main man and lewis allen only got 11. lewis allen's basically my third or fourth choice striker now i guess i would say riley's a better striker striker than lewis allen but i do like lewis allen 
Anyway, here we go. Fotu on the attack. Back to O'Connor, the young Irish lad. What he what can he do in his first season for me? Skips past his player. Cooper into Fotu. Tackled. Riley. Tackled. Fotu. Riley. Oh, straight at Robles. And that was a chance to, to take the lead with a clear-cut chance there from Riley. Has a good pre-season, actually. Scored two or three goals. And didn't get injured. And that's the main thing. He's had a really horrible first two years for me in terms of injuries. Uh, not so much the first year. Uh, he was off the bench mainly in the first year, coming off the bench. But last year, really struggled with injuries. We're doing okay. Keep going up there and we can still win. I, yeah, we can. O'Connor's only on a 6.4. So I'll keep an eye on him. Langiano's on a 6.3 for some reason. So we'll watch out for O'Connor. I might bring on Hoey or Perkins for him. My more experienced players that played last year. Especially Hoey played for the last... Three years now, I guess, hasn't he? Good tackle by Lucena. Can he win the ball? Yes, Cooper. Oh, he's giving it away. That was poor. But ah, oh, Langiano gives the ball away. Hickford. This looks dangerous. And he's missed. Wilkinson somehow misses that clear-cut chance. And we both had two. We both had a good chance to to take the lead here. Can we get hold of the ball here? Come on, guys. Close him down. Uh, it would be really nice to, to get a win in our first game, but a draw would also be good. Hickford does well, and uh, where was Carvalho? I'm very confused there. We're 1-0 down. I think he'd come out for the initial uh, shot. Let's see. He came out there, but Hickford put in the good tackle, and then, then he decided to dive for the ball, and that was really odd behaviour. That's annoying, because I've been bigging him up saying he had a really good pre-season, solid, didn't make a mistake, and you could argue that was a mistake. Can't he's on a 6.3, I think it was a mistake. And will Lovelock be making a return to the team? Not straight away. We need to, we need to change it up. I've got Anthony Bacon on the bench, he's basically my fourth or fifth choice striker now, because of new sign-ins. But he might be coming on for Fotu today. O'Connor's going to come off for Hoey. And I'm going to... P Pimenta's really tired, isn't he? Maybe bring on Perkins for him. We've gone attacking. Let's see if we can get back into this game. But we may end up losing our first championship game. Which will be disappointing, but expected, I guess. My defence... Is probably the strongest part of my team, but they've not had a great game today by the looks of it on their performances. We're going to have to to change it up. I'm going to bring on Anthony Bacon for photo. Let's see what he can do up front. Can he pull off a shock for me? He was a super sub at times last season, so let's see if he can do the same. We're going to go route one, pump it into the box, take more risks. Not going to exploit the flanks. We're just going to pump it, and let's see if we can. Get back into this game, please. Come on, guys. Let's do this. I may have to get Percivilli and the Puffin back at some point. Especially if this is a, a season of struggle. But we've often lost the first game of the season and had a decent season after that. And it looks like we're going to lose today. Nothing going on. I've gone overload and nothing's happened. But we've got 30 seconds to get back into this. Hoey, Riley, is there a chance here? Doesn't look like it. This is probably going to be the end of the game now. 20 seconds to go. Come on, guys, just get hold of the ball and lump it up there. No, this is going to be the end. Eight seconds, five, four, three, two, one. There we go, it's the end. It's a disappointing start to the season. Probably a goal that could have been avoided. And I guess it was a mistake by Carvalho, our new keeper. Which is annoying, maybe because he can't speak English yet. On the new FM16, I've said I'm not happy because... And he's been demotivated here. Maybe I'll have to give him an individual team talk. I don't know if he can speak English. I'm just checking. No. That could be a problem, actually. On the, uh, As I was saying, on FM16, you can give them an intensive language course. I'm going to say... Costly mistake. What should I say? I'm going to say that. Now he looks happy. That could... That might be important for future games, me saying that. Anyway, I'll give him another... I think I'll... I'll play Lovelock in the Capital One Cup. 
Or should I stick the faith with Carvalho? That's the thing. Because he made... I think I probably should stick with Carvalho. It's only in two days' time. But let's go and play that game. Right, so Mitchell has rejected another loan bid from me. I just don't know what to do. I've put him as key player. I've said, I've said mid central midfield is preferred position. Maybe you would prefer to play up front. Let's see what happens if I say striker and see if that makes a difference. I'm going to go for end of the season again and give him another go. Okay. I always have to play my league, game, league cup games early. Why do I have to play on Monday? It's really annoying. I suppose I've got plenty of time to recover for the, the Barnsley game, which is definitely a game I need to be winning if I want to basically stay up this season. Defeat against Wolves could have been avoided. A bit unfortunate. Anyway, I'm going to make a lot of changes. And I'm going to stick with Carvalho. Some of you are probably thinking I should play Lovelock or get an English keeper in. A better English keeper. I don't know. Maybe I should look for a better keeper on loan than those two. And have actually three keepers. But I don't know. I uh, I think they're good players. Oh, Bob Paris is suspended. So I'm going to have to play... Oops. Getting muddled up. I'm going to stick with... Um, Tenza. And then I'm going to drop Hickford for Bartley. I'm playing a weaker team, expecting to still beat Gillingham. We really should beat them, whatever. I'm going to put Langiano. Yeah, I'm going to give Langiano a rest. Pimenta's tired, so I'm going to play Perkins instead of him. Howie's going to come into the team for O'Connor. Cooper's going to come up. So I'm basically swapping the team around completely. I think it needs to be done because of. The, the game was only two days ago. Andrew Hunt's back from injury. I'm going to put him on the bench for Pimenta. Bacon's going to come out for Lewis Allen. He's going to go onto the bench. In fact, I'm going to play... I'm going to give Foto a game because he's really struggling for, for goals uh, from his previous club when he was on loan at South End in League 2 as well. He really needs to get some goals under his belt. So I'm going to keep him in the team. I'm going to take out O'Connor for... Langiano to go onto the bench. Okay, let's do this. In fact, Cameron Stewart could come into the team. He'd come in for George Cooper. Let's see if. Yeah, I need to to play Cameron Stewart at some point. Otherwise, there was no point actually re-signing him on loan. Not on loan. What am I talking about? I've offered him a new contract, haven't I? Three, uh, a one-year contract. Okay, let's get on with this. I suppose I've been saying the fact that Carvalho can't speak English is a problem. It is a problem for a goalkeeper, especially his defence are English speakers. But he does have three other Portuguese players around him. We've got four Portuguese players in the team, so perhaps he won't be quite as unsettled. They all might settle into the team well because they've got Portuguese players with them. So that certainly could help him. And so it's not the end of the world that you can't speak English, but it really would help, I guess. And maybe we will have to go with Lovelock in the end. I, he had a good pre-season, though, so uh, I think it was just that that one mistake, that bad mistake against Wolves. Hopefully he can recover from that. And that's why I've decided to stick with him in this game. OK, let's do this. If we get through this, I'll probably be playing Lovelock in the next Capital One Cup game, though. Robinson offside. We obviously should be winning this against Gillingham. I'm going to go attacking and fluid actually just to uh, show we mean business because we do. I want to win a Capital One Cup game for the first time in a while. Corner. Oh, Perkins finds the back of the net. He scored at the end of last season to send me up as champions. Remember that game against Portsmouth? And he's grabbed another goal. Which is great to see for the youngster. Lucena with the corner. Faulkner crossed in. Robinson fell over. And Perkins, lovely finish into the, the top left-hand corner. He's on a yellow, but he's got the goal. And, yeah, good start to the game for us. Walker Peters is slightly tired here. WP, I could call him. I've, caught, I've obviously had JUB, LD, WP. But I, th I, can, I'm, I can easily pronounce Walker Peters, so it's probably just going to be Walker Peters. Perkins... Gives the ball away, but in comes Bartley over the top. I think Robinson's offside. Or maybe he's not. Yeah, he is. He's not. Wait. Oh, what? Ah, it was a goal. I saw the linesman stand still and thought it was offside. But remarkably, it's not. And Robinson scores, which is good. We need these players to get goals. To keep them happy. Keep them motivated. And Walker Peters has got injured, which is annoying. 
So on comes Lorenzo, my Portuguese right back. <sighs> but still 2-0 at half time. I'm happy with that. And they've not had a single shot, so that's very pleasing. But we need Fotu to score. I'm going to swap him back to defense to uh, deep line forward. Maybe the fact that he's an, as an advanced forward, that's the problem. Let's see. Advanced forward, let's see if that makes a difference to him and if he can score. Okay, second half. Please hit the like button if you're still enjoying the series, if you're hoping and wishing me luck for this championship season. Really hope it can be a positive season. We've obviously lost that first game. It's not the end of the world. Hopefully I can make some tweaks and we can start to score some goals in the championship and have a comfortable first season. Photo scores, there we go. Deep line forward, it works. Maybe that is the problem there. Maybe I have to play a deep line forward in this tactic, despite the fact my strikers don't exactly fit into the deep line forward role nowadays. But lovely play, Faulkner into Foto. First time here, gets his first goal for a while in a competitive game. Scored a couple in pre-season, doesn't really count I guess. Can we get a fourth? Hoey, into Perkins. T oh, I thought he was tackled, but it's into Lechena. Hoey, nice play, Foto. That's awful though. His first shot was good, that one was terrible. I'm going to make some changes. Aaron Perkins can come off. I'm going to give Andrew Hunt a game, but I'm going to play him. Uh, how he can go into the advanced playmaker role. Hunt coming back from injury. Give him 40 minutes to get back into his stride. Okay, half an hour to go. I'm going to take off photo. I think he's captain today. By the way, Lovelock is still club captain. Hickford is um, deputy, vice captain, whatever you want to call it. So uh, it's meant Foto, who's actually quite good at leadership, is third on the list, I think. But Lewis Allen can come on, see if he can grab a goal for me. Here he goes. Allen hits it. Oh, it's tipped over the bar by the keeper. And Lucena takes the corner, knocked away, back to Lorenzo. I like my Portuguese players, I do. They've got some great names. 3-0, I'll definitely take that. They've not had a single shot all game, even off target. How is that even possible? Surely by this point you'd have thought, one player would have thought, let's just smash it from halfway and get a shot on the on the statistics. Here we go, maybe this is going to be a shot for them finally. It is, and it's almost in. It was almost a beauty over the top of Carvalho's head. I don't think he could have done much about that. But it looks like we're going to win 3-0. Very good win in the Catalan Cup. A game we should be winning comfortably, but finally uh, getting a win in the League Cup. Playing at Fawcett's Farm, by the way, I did mention in the last episode we are having work done on the uh, our current stadium. 3,000 extra seats. So we're at Fawcett's Farm, which in real life is going to be a uh, stadium for Southend, or potentially could be a stadium for Southend. We got a crowd of 815 at Fawcett's Farm, which is a 22,000-seater stadium. That is awful. That shows how people just don't care about the League Cup. Southend aren't playing there. It's really, it's really strange. We actually got uh, 10,000 people for the Arsenal game, so I suppose that's my record attendance ever for a game. Please come to me, Mitchell. Anyway, that's the end of this episode, guys. The next, like I said, the next game is essential, but we've got tough games after that. Burnley, Forest, and Everton, really tough. The next video, probably, I mean, I suppose the sensible thing would be Exeter Chesterfield, because those are two games we really should be winning. So they're crucial games. So I'll probably show those games. Hopefully, get revenge against Chesterfield. Thanks for watching. Please hit that like button. Leave your thoughts on my new signings in the comment section below. You can buy or pre-order FM16 via the links in my description below as well. That would be much appreciated. I will see you soon, guys.